Dick Katz. Uh, Dick was not that, I don't want to put this in the wrong way, but Dick was one of the most literate jazz musicians that I knew. He was a good writer. He did, uh, Martin Williams liked him a lot, and he did the notes for the piano anthology that Martin put together on the Smithsonian. Uh, Dick was really a great piano player. I don't think he ever got the reputation that he deserved, but musicians knew about him. Benny Carter, when recorded with him, used him. Uh, he was a really intelligent, sensitive man, and uh, he had good judgment in everything. You know, he, he was a fine person. And uh, he had a brother who had a publishing, a small uh, specialized publishing house in DC, I think. And uh, they published uh, Richard Merriman's interview with Louis. It's a little red, you probably know it. It's just the size, of, that was his brother. So they were, you know, they must have been raised right. Uh, <laughs> he had a connection with Helen Merrill, didn't he? They made, uh, he was her musical director, more or less. One of them, she had others. And Helen is still with us and still singing, you know. She's very popular in Japan. When my friend Daryl Sherman was in Tokyo a few years ago, she had a, she had a gig there that lasted about four years going to Tokyo for about six weeks in a row. Uh, and she went to see Helen at the Blue Note in Tokyo and said that clearly she was still very popular in Japan. Um, so Dick was also you know, he was he was an, an, an arranger too, not for big bands, right? and he was superbly knowledgeable about piano. One of the things that we talked about, because there was a sample of that in that anthology, was Billy Kyle. We both admired Billy Kyle, and we both scratched our heads that nobody ever did it an album, a session with Billy Kyle, did one little session as a leader for Decca, you know, and that's it, except that I think he's also got, he, he has a band under his name, a small group, which is related to the whole John Kirby thing before it became John Kirby. And he was a composer. He did arranging the band that he was in and Charlie Shavers and, uh, and uh, I guess Kirby too. Uh, Mills Blue Rhythm Band, which is a much underrated band, by the way. Uh, Billy did some arranging there, and I forget which one tune was stolen from him <laughs> by somebody in the Basie Band, I think. Billy was, you know, I mean, he was he, he was a wonderful player. He did art trio records with Buster Bailey. Uh, yes. Yes. Lorna Doon Shortbread. <laughs> Lorna Doon Shortbread, Baby Won't You Please Come yeah. Home, uh, taken at an astonishing tempo. They're issued under O'Neill Spencer's name. As a leader, O'Neill Spencer, terrific drummer. I never, he was gone. Yeah. Uh, but brush man, he was a great brush guy. And people talk about him. Dizzy talked about him. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Dick was a real, you know, well-rounded musician. He could play, he was in big bands with Benny Carter. Remember Benny, he, <laughs> that was Benny. Uh, when it, they did a, a thing where Dick had a solo, he usually did have a solo. And Dick was something that he rarely did, but he quoted the quote was very appropriate and it was short. It was just, you know, maybe, you know, like just a smidgen. But Benny stopped it and what Benny said is, 
we want to hear Dick Katz, we don't want to hear, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> he admonished him. <laughs> uh, Dick, well, we joked about that later. Um, he did something different from what he usually did, which turned out remarkably well. There was a tenor player named Percy Franz. Have you encountered him? He was a f somewhat of a regular at Phil Schaap's operation there by Columbia University. The West End uh, Cabaret. The West End, yeah. And so was Dick. He was there quite a lot. And he and Percy Franz and a drummer, that was a trio. Uh, I think Phil may have taped them, and there may even be, there may have been something on a cassette or whatever, but they were wonderful together. And, and Percy was kind of a, you know, like a Harlem style tenor, you know, and, and you wouldn't think that they would fit, but they fit very well. And Percy knew tunes and he had a good ear. But Dick was very flexible. You know, uh, he was with Roy for a long time. Roy really loved him. And he was really, at that point in time, he was Roy's favorite piano player uh, to work with. And uh, uh, he brought him to Detroit when he had a gig there with somebody, a bass player, whose name I forget, uh, recorded th the whole thing. It's, a, it's like several hours of interview. But Dick and Roy really, you know, hit it off musically and personally. And uh, Dick was extremely fond of Roy and he took it hard when Roy died, you know. Uh, so uh, that was the thing about him was also that uh, he was totally without any prejudice because unfortunately, I mean, by and large, white musicians, jazz musicians are not prejudiced, but there are exceptions and their degrees, you know. Uh, Dick was absolutely, you know, a hundred percent and that's why he was so well liked and so well accepted. Because there are little things, you know, some that I wasn't aware of, but when I got friendly with musicians who were sensitive to that, they would make me aware of it, say. You know, I mean, so-and-so, the good guy, except when it comes to, you know, interracial, sex relations, you know, then there is something that happens, you know. So that, yeah, but Dick was 100% in that respect, and uh, he was just a dear man, and uh, you could have really great conversations with him, not only about music, but one thing he said that I'll never forget, and I think I have used it, giving him credit for that, he said, Jazz is a way of speaking music. And that's really a very profound observation. It would seem like that jazz is a language. It is a language. And that's absolutely true because it is a, you know, a vast storehouse of phrases and things that work, you know, and establish continuity. And Playing a solo is, 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 it, it, it is like talking. It's like talking, you know, uh, it's definitely. So he was, Dick was a, was a thinker. And he also did something <laughs> that made me happy. He recorded one of Daryl Sherman's tunes. And she writes some nice things. Uh, well, needless to say, I was very fond of Dick and uh, he was really, he was really a first class player. He was, he had his own thing and uh, he was, had impeccable taste in everything, you know. 
and, and unless I'm wrong, there's only one album of his under his own name where he does his own stuff, and that's from the 50s on Atlantic called Piano and Pen. Yeah. And, but he didn't, yeah. he was a side man for yeah. most of his yeah. life, yeah. it seemed to yeah. me. And when I hear a solo of his on somebody else's record, I always hope that someone's going to say, take another chorus, yeah. take, play more. Yeah, yeah. There is a CD of his own, uh, yeah. that's the one that Daryl's tune is on, okay. but there's far too little. And he really wasn't, I mean, everybody, if you said Dick Katz, I mean, they knew his name. Uh, Orrin Keep knew his luck him a lot. He did those things with Helen, you know, that was on the... But, uh, you know, I mean, as you, as you say, you know, he, he did, he wasn't sufficiently recognized. Uh, And he, you know, he died too soon. Has a nice son. Yes, J Jamie Katz. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we don't end the, this on a grim note. Before we started the camera rolling, I said Dick Katz made me think of Nancy Harrow because of their connection. And she's somebody who I wish thousands of people more knew about her. And you know her now. Yes, I had the good fortune of, uh, I, I met Nancy a long time ago, and she was editing, she is a very smart woman, she was editing a magazine that had nothing to do with jazz really. It was a, a literary, what, what we used to call a little magazine. Yeah. Uh, we could find out, look up what the name of it was, but anyway. We had that in common. <laughs> we were editors. I think I may have done something for her. I'm not sure. I did liner notes for her. She did a CD uh, based on a Viola Cather uh, novel. Yeah. Uh, uh, a Lost Lady. Viola yeah. Cather's A Lost Lady. Yeah. yeah. She, she's, as I said, you know, she, uh, more recently, maybe a, a few years ago, uh, she did a play uh, that was done off-Broadway with a few performances. I went to see that. She did Maya the Bee, which is really a thing meant for children, but it's not, it, yeah. it's, it, it's, you can appreciate it, it's not childish, it may be childlike. Uh, so she has, you know, many, many strings, but she's an excellent singer, very musical and n musically knowledgeable. But her first recording uh, was The Wild Women Don't Have the Blues, which was based on, there was some Ida Cox material, a vintage blues with a very good band that included my dear departed friend Dick Wellstood, and I think Buck, what was Buck on it? Uh, Buck and Dickie Wells, yeah. and maybe Tommy Gwaltney, yeah. and Oliver Jackson, and yeah. maybe Milt. Yeah. It was a Nat Hentoff production, and Nat, which wasn't, I'm happy, I was on a panel after Nat's departure uh, at, at, at St. Pete's, and uh, I had done my homework on his work as a record producer, which did not last very long, but it was for Archie Blyer's sub-label, his jazz label, uh, which was called Cadence, I think. Candid. It was a, was a child of Cadence. <laughs> Archie Blyer was one of the most successful writers of stock arrangements in the late 20s and early 30s, the stocks of them, and they were good. But he started this record label, and he liked jazz, so he made. And he had the good sense to hire Nat, who had no experience as a record producer, but had been on tons of sessions. And of course, he he and Whitney Balliard were responsible for that wonderful television show. Uh, Robert Harrods, which we should mention him. He, of course, wouldn't have happened without him. 
but that was such a good thing. So anyway, I'm getting away from the point. He produced Nancy's, uh, and it was one of the early ones in that series. One of the people he did also was Phil Woods. I think it was an album called The Rights of Swing. And Phil was on a Nancy Harrow date, which I happened to be at, on which Phil also played some clarinet. And I love Phil's clarinet playing. Somehow, I mean, his alto, needless to say, he was a, one of the great alto players, but clarinet was his major at uh, Juilliard, I think he was a clarinet, and he played beautiful clarinet. He had such a wonderful sound, you know. There's a lot of saxophone players that are great, that are not a lot, but the great saxophone players who are also great clarinetists. Lester Young, of course, is, is one of them. Benny Carter. But Benny is old. We have to talk about Benny. He's old. Okay. Oh, uh, another so. one who's a great clarinetist is Buddy Tate, who played clarinet maybe on two or three things uh, in the 60s. It's just gorgeous. Mm. Well, yeah. Benny, no, I got away from Benny, but Benny on clarinet, there's a big band arrangement of his, of, uh, of All of Me, where he takes such a beautiful solo and his sound is so lovely. Nobody else has a sound quite like that. It's very woodsy. But getting back to Nancy Harrow, that, you know, she, she had some great musicians on her own sessions, and she had quite a few. She made quite a few CDs. And uh, she also has, I've misplaced his name, but she has a, a very, very nice husband who is not a musician, but uh, very much supportive of what she does. Well, I hope she sees this video and she can write in and say my husband's name is and we can complete the it'll, circle. It'll undoubtedly come to me but too late. <laughs> That's okay. Well, if but, you remember you can tell me. But I, you know, it, what is the opposite of what happens to you when you get old? And it's not only me, fortunately, so it doesn't bother me that much. But you're the opposite of a name dropper, <laughs> name dropout. Name, name, name swallow. <laughs> name. The, the, the French yeah. it, call it ponce d'escalier. My accent is terrible. Uh. But the thought you have on the stairway going down after the party. <laughs> Uh, so we should, on that note, let's hold for a second.